Hello, everybody who's joining us today. We have an exciting event here at Akron Soul Train. We are going to be doing our first ever virtual cooking segment. And today we're going to be doing it with Aracy Archer. And we backdrop the cooking uh, session today with the artwork on view here. Uh, this is the last week that you can check out this artwork, so we encourage you to come down. But today we want you to cook with us um, an amazing traditional, right, traditional uh, Ghanaian beef stew. And Aracy is going to go through all of this with you and tell you exactly how to cook it at home. I want to just quickly thank the sponsors of this exhibition, Brennan, Mana, and Diamonds, for allowing us to bring the work in here to uh, share it with the public. But again, let's get to some cooking, some good, delicious food. So we'll, we'll pan over and... Hi, I'm Aracy Archer, and like Peter already said, I'm going to be teaching or cooking um, Ghanaian beef stew, so um, let's get into it. <laughs> um, I already have rice um, cooking, so if you want to start on that, you can go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to turn my stove or hot pot on <laughs> to um, medium to low, between that. So... And just really quick about the rice, um, I see that you're cooking it in a rice cooker today, which is awesome. But typically, do you cook it at home on the stove, or yeah. are you a rice cooker fan? I cook it. I do not have a rice cooker, so I cook it at home on the stove in my little pot, just like that. And, yeah, I usually just, I don't really use a measuring cup. I just, like, because any cup can be a measuring cup, so it's like a one-to-two ratio of rice and water so that's what I just do whatever cup I have I just do that so today we're using a rice cooker though which is nice so um, I'm gonna start with the beef stew <laughs> and I'm gonna pour my oil in I'm gonna put a decent amount of oil because we are frying beef in it before we put the you know veggies inside to cook so that I'm going to let that warm up and then I'm going to add the beef to it. In the meantime, while that's warming up, I'm going to cut up my veggies and yeah. <laughs> I've never done this before, so bear with me. <laughs> <laughs> A little nervous. So the first veggies I'm going to cut up are um, my onions because I make an onion paste that goes in with the beef after it's cooked a little bit and then that kind of can kind of you know the beef can you know grab the flavors of the onion so I'm gonna do that and you don't need to chop it up in any special way because it's all gonna be blended up you're not gonna see the veggies but you're gonna mm -hmm. taste it so it doesn't really matter how you cut it up it's all going in the blender and Just the easiest onion I've ever peeled. <laughs> All the onions I ever buy, they're like always like stuck to it. And it never comes off. So yeah, I just cut it up anyhow. If you do know that your blender though is kind of slow, because mine at home is kind of slow, I cut it up more um, thinly because it needs help. Because my blender is not great. <laughs> but Today, we gave you the super blender. Okay, that's a awesome. Vitamix. So, if you at home don't have a Vitamix, you should get one. You it's should get my one. favorite tool in the kitchen. Okay. Also, if you go to blend and you realize that it's not blending as smoothly as possible, just pour in a little bit of water. And that should be fine. Yeah, I'm going to grab my blender. And why a paste? I mean, is that like, that's just traditional? With that's just traditional. So 
for me, I never like really like was in the kitchen when my mom cooked, so I don't have any like real explanations for anything because I learned all this. I just looked up a recipe and then like tuned it to how I liked it. So I cannot tell you. <laughs> so <laughs> you can't tell us the origin or the history of necessarily why, but yeah. I, well, I think for us it's just that for because most of our stews it's not just the beef stew. Um, it is everything is just like blended down. Unlike American stews where you can like see all the veggies in there, ours is like complete West African stew. I should say is completely different, where everything is blended down. And I think that's probably because the base for jollof rice is this is the first step to make jollof rice, and mm -hmm. jollof you don't see like the veggies okay. in there. So that's yeah. <laughs> and that would be a common dish. I mean, like, the rice would be something that we would find, like, plentifully. Yeah. So did. it's different because what I realize here also is that usually the main meal is over here. Like, chicken and, like, beef would be, like, the main dish and then, like, rice is the side. In Ghana, rice is the dish and then the stew is the, like, side okay. stuff. So, yeah. And usually the stew is eaten with, like, starches, like rice and we have this um, millet, corn based. It's kind of like a, um, what is the? Like the, a tortilla? Or? No, the Mexican dish that's in like a um, corn husk. Oh, uh, it's molly? Yeah, it's kind of like that, but like on a, like bigger, literally bigger. Yeah. It's also in like a corn husk. It's cooked in that, okay. yeah, so. Yeah. Okay. I'm done chopping up my onions. And then the next thing that goes in there with the onions is one scotch bonnet pepper or habanero pepper. I don't really like take seeds out because everything's going to be blended down and you're not going to notice. And then some minced garlic. And if you were chopping a garlic bulb at home, about how many of the... I just used the whole bulb. The whole bulb. Okay. I just, I don't like really measure anything. I just like, yeah, even all same with like ginger, because this dish does use ginger, but we don't have ginger here today. But I just usually, I don't even peel the ginger. I just drop it in because it's all getting blended and I'm like, I'm just gonna wash the skin really well. Mm -hmm. And I mean like it's all going in one stomach, so. <laughs> <laughs> So. That's good. Probably the skin of the ginger is super healthy for you. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. So. Yeah, it just I? sits on top. That's like it? That. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to blend. Oh, I didn't have it on. <laughs> <laughs> This is way faster than my blender. <laughs> <laughs> my blender does not do that. A little jealous, but okay. Our, oh, that can sit while I put the oils ready. So I'm gonna put in the beef um, gently because it is hot oil. And what kind of beef do you typically use? Are you, you know, like we obviously we grabbed a ribeye for this today, but it, what kind of beef do you usually select? I usually select whatever is affordable in the store. Whatever is affordable and doesn't have the bone in it, I just get That's it. what you get. Yeah. Okay. So far it's beef. All it, for me it's all beef. Okay. So I, again, this is not a family recipe. This is a me recipe. Gotcha. So, and I'm not a professional chef. I would like to say that here. <laughs> so if anyone's expecting any like fancy terms, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not the one. So. But okay. your artwork is about the kind of food that brings you back to a place that you love. Yeah. Right? And everybody I think can relate to food that takes them back to a time or place in their life, you know, yeah. a favorite dish, a family member who cooked something, and it's not a fancy out of a cookbook dish, you know? Yeah, So true. I mean, yeah, you're going to see later, I'm going to put it in spices and there's no measurements. Whatever your heart wants, put it in. But yeah, so 
I'm gonna let this sit in here and kind of and if you see that your meat is sticking to the bottom just kind of like scrape it from the bottom because we don't want to burn it but would you like me to stir it while you're cutting stuff up or you um, want me to just keep my eyes on it you can keep your eyes on it i'm okay. gonna put, i'm actually gonna put in a little bit of um curry powder and a little bit of um maggie seasoning it's the equivalent to a chicken bouillon but yeah that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna put in curry powder <laughs> yep that one okay yep. so like i said whatever your heart wants and i'm gonna take this off because because <laughs> you want a good amount a yeah you're my <laughs> heart always wants a lot so <laughs> Mm, I love the way that curry powder smells when cooking. Me too. So curry powder, and then Maggie seasoning. When it gets cold, that's the the thing about Maggie seasoning is that in the cold it kind of hardens. So this is definitely something I would enjoy to pick up more if I was in Ghana because it's always hot there, and the Maggie seasoning would not be cold and frozen. <laughs> <laughs> so where do you get it here how do you I get go to the um, African market there's an African market on Lee okay and I go to that market or sometimes I go to um, the Asian market down in I'm bad with like Asia town in Cleveland yeah okay and Asia so you're town talking about Lee Road in Cleveland Heights yeah and then park to shop that's where I go because I, I, I went in there one day and I found like some of the ingredients that I used and that was nice so yeah I'm gonna stir this in so if anybody's watching that knows where to get Maggie powder in Akron you can chime in or maybe we'll try and figure it out and post something somewhere I did think yeah. I think I saw somewhere online that world market may have it so that is one place to look there is a world market in the Fairlawn area so yeah and also, if you can't find any of these things, or if you can't, like, you know, physically walk into a store, Amazon is actually good for having, for finding all these things. Same with Etsy, because there are, like, um, you know, people from Ghana who live here now who sell that on Etsy. So they sell a whole bunch of different, you know, foreign stuff. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm going to mix this in. Then I'm going to put in a little scoop of tomato paste. Then kind of just Now, what would you suggest for someone, let's say, like me, who's a vegetarian? Would you use mushrooms in place of beef? What do you think you would, if you were going to do this for a vegetarian, what if would you I do? If I was going to do this for a vegetarian, I would probably, I'm not someone who eats a lot of mushrooms, so I don't know about that, but probably just tofu for the base. And okay. if you don't eat tofu, you could just like deduct any ingredients and that is not vegan and it should still be fine okay yeah so the Maggie is obviously is that like a chicken based um, seasoning yeah okay so, so we would you maybe have, use like a vegetable yeah. bouillon cube right. or something like, like that like okay. veggie um, stock even yeah would be fine so yeah you can like I I mean I adapted it to my liking you can also do the same so far as you kind of like keep the base ingredients yep. the same you're still gonna have the same stew. It doesn't really matter, cause this is cause if I was to make um, chicken stew, it's just gonna be the same steps, just mm -hmm. chicken. Gotcha. Yeah. If I was to make pork, it's just you know. same thing, but just change yeah. the meat or or the base. Right. Protein. Yeah. Okay. So while that's still, it's looking very good. For a hot plate, this this For hot a, plate is working well. This hot plate is what <laughs> working really well. But I'm going to chop up my um, 
tomatoes and peppers. So for um, Ghanaian stews, usually the base is more tomato, but I realized that I like the flavor of the peppers way more, so mine is more pepper dominant than tomato dominant. Okay. Because I just like the like peppers, the flavors of peppers. Okay. So. And same with, you know, the garlic and the tomatoes and the ginger. I do not, I just cook the seeds. Yeah. Because it's all getting blended. So I just chop it up. And usually I would use about like three big red bell peppers but sometimes if I can't find or if I feeling too lazy to go to the store and I have peppers that are not red I just put it in because they kind of have the same flavor yep yeah I think red bell peppers are just sweeter they are I, I, I find that too yeah they seem to be my favorite go-to if I'm looking for a snacking pepper I always go red yeah And so when you say that you're going to blend it up, you're also going to blend the meat up? Like, no. no. Okay. I was like, <laughs> That wow. would be okay. nasty. <laughs> <laughs> it would be like that. I don't know if any of you watch Victorious, but there is an episode in there where I think one of the characters has like a food processor grinder thing and he like blends everything, like including pizza. Oh my goodness. This is not Victorious, so we're not blending meat. <laughs> That would be kind of horrendous. And just when we're talking, you know, like we're, we're, we're cooking here, we're enjoying this food, but so your show though, I want to talk a little bit about some of the color selections. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like some of the color selections are representative of these like red peppers of the stew? Like, you know, I'm just thinking of a couple of the pieces over here on the right. Yeah. Yeah, I think that the color is, I mean, the, my color palette in general when I make art is representative of the country I come from because I do come from a very colorful place. So, yeah, the colors are representative and with this, ex usually I kind of distort like my images with like color and stuff. With this show, I didn't have to do that because the food colors are already vibrant and stuff. So, yeah. Gotcha. And, and these pieces over here, the sculptural pieces that you have, this piece is called snacks. And these are things that you would find, right? You would just find them in a store? Yeah. Or you would find them in a store. We call them roadside sellers, where it's like they're usually walking in between medians with where, you know, on the road. And they're selling plantain chips, you know, ice cream. We have cocoa yam chips. I don't know if you know what a cocoa yam is. No. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like a yam but like tougher, like okay. way tougher, like way So way. it's a root vegetable yeah. but with just like more. Yeah. Yeah, usually you it's not just food that you see roadside sellers. Like there's, people are selling sunglasses, people are selling like, you know, wallets, stuff like that. So, yeah. You're okay. Okay. Okay, so this is cooked enough. So I'm gonna add in my onion mix. Have you found any of these snacks here, or is that another like gotta find it on Amazon? <laughs> I don't even think this is an Amazon thing because those are ice creams. Oh, I mean, apart from creams. that, which is a, the the one that says snack. burger, it's the um, peanut snack. 
Yeah. And then for meat pie, meat pies are the same as Jamaican patties, so that's not yeah, really... you're not going to get that. You're going to get that's like somebody cooked that. Yeah, somebody cooked and But then the African market that I go to sells beef patties. So... Is it like a super large pierogi? Have you ever had a pierogi? No. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have not. I think most cultures have some sort of dough with meat inside. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Very For the most part. When yeah. I go to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, they sell these things called um, pasties, and they are sort of, they look just like that and they're filled with all sorts of like potatoes or yeah. meat or different things so that's what that reminds me of a pasty from the upper peninsula of michigan yeah okay so i cut up one tomato because the tomato i had was quite large and i like i said i don't really like the tomato base as much and then i'm gonna put in my peppers that i cut up into the blender and yeah, this is probably going to be a big batch of stew because I don't think I've found a recipe that, like, just has stew for one. <laughs> this is probably for, like, ten. That's okay, but is it freezable? So, is it something yeah, that you can freezable. freeze? Yeah, it's freezable. You can freeze it. Usually, what I've realized whenever I was, like, doing research when I was, like, starting to cook for myself is that usually people freeze these as the base for if they're going to cook jollof rice because the stews are the base for jollof rice. So after you're done you can like freeze it put it in the fridge save it if you wanted to make jollof rice the next day you can just unfreeze it and do that here's my so, friend ben who's helping me today a little bit late to the party but that's okay <laughs> you're here fashionably late yes that's okay. all right so okay now i'm gonna blend the peppers and before that tomato paste is part of this blend okay so You can start that if you want. Sure, yeah. Okay. Doesn't it smell good? It smells <laughs> really good in here. Oh I'm sorry God. that you're, <laughs> yes, you're seeing it and you're not smelling it, but I'm telling you, if you're cooking this at home, you're smelling some amazing, amazing spices. And this has been going for a while because you already have the oil. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it's going to get better when I put in the tomato, this mixture with all the spices that I'm not going to measure. Do you have a scotch bonnet in there too? Yeah. Yeah. Scotch bonnet. Also scotch bonnet is like a West African like love language. So So that's what you all should send you for Christmas is scotch bonnet. Yeah, peppers. a whole bunch of red yes. scotch bonnets. Okay. I would appreciate that. It's also just a beautiful name for a pepper. <laughs> yeah. I wish we had more names. That you're okay. right. That is a beautiful name for a pepper. so good. <laughs> yeah, Mine at home does not do that. I just want to remind you all at home again, that's Vitamix and they're incredible. And I'm not a salesperson for Vitamix, but that is the one to get. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to let the onion mix cook in here for about 10 minutes and then I'm going to put in the um, tomato pepper mix and then that's, and then with all the spices and then that's going to sit for another 15 minutes and then that should be it. Usually though, when I cook chicken stew I leave it on there for like two hours because the longer you cook chicken the tender yeah, it gets way it will yeah. fall off the bone and the stew is also like the flavors just like slowly merge together so but it should be fine even if we don't do it for two hours okay. it's still gonna be tasty yeah we have beef <laughs> how many times, Ben? Have you, how many times have you eaten this dish? What well, can you say when about it? To, when I go over to Reese's, it's usually um, a mix of the two of us cooking. So it'll always be um, Reese's will usually you'll usually make um, rice. We'll usually yeah. have what happening, and we both have a love for um, canned uh, corned beef. <laughs> yeah. Which is, I mean, that's in a lot of the things you make. It's really fantastic, especially when you mix it with your rice and stuff. So I can't say I've actually ever. Beef no, stew I think every time I had we've beef had stew, pork, we've had, yeah, we did do something with beef, but I can't remember. We it did. Exactly like this. No, every time that I did make beef stew, some like either Ben was sick or I was sick right after that, and yeah, then, true. It does, it does and then I was like, I, I mean, I can save you some, but like, 
I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, you're gonna you are going to have some yeah. today. So yeah. you're going to have to tell you're everyone gonna... at home. I'm a vegetarian, so I actually am not going to be tasting the aroma. This. The aroma. Good. I'm going to enjoy the sensory yeah. things about this beef stew. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, I'm going to actually move all the spices. Usually when I'm cooking, I just move all the spices to the stove. Okay. Because I, I'm just like, we got to be ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> Also, I forgot to put in star anise, but this is usually part of the onion mix. Oh, okay. But it's okay because there's a... Pita got me a lovely spice blend with this included. So I'll just add it in when I put the spices in. Yep. So the spices that we have are cumin, um, curry powder, Paprika, which you don't, if you, depending on what spice level you have and depending on if you, if you did put in a habanero pepper, those are pretty hot, so you wouldn't really put a lot of paprika in it because, you know, squash bonnets are really spicy. Some bay leaves. Mm. Some cinnamon which all the cinnamon stuff is in this mix. Yeah. So it should be fine. I just realized that cinnamon kind of like, you know, grounds all the flavors. That was one thing that I discovered when I was figuring it out for myself. And then I have shrimp powder and usually shrimp powder is not included in stews in Ghana. It's usually included in um, a condiment named shito and it's basically onions cook down really slowly for like a long time and it becomes this really dark sauce. But I was, I was like, well, let me see if it's gonna taste good in a stew and it did, so. Shrimp, shrimp powder. Shrimp powder. Yeah. And where did you find that? Also at the store on Lee? Also at the store, but then I also get them at, on Amazon. Okay. Yeah. But. I was say, I've had that, that sauce that you made. Yeah. Which is incredible. Just like <laughs> flavor density wise. Thank you. Mix you. On literally anything. Yeah. What did we mix it into? We had it with, um, what were the beans, the bean patties we made? The black bean um, sort of fritters. Do you know what those were? I don't. We made the black bean <laughs> fritters and they were um, the black eyed peas, if you remember. We had them with your sauce. Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does so those have a name? Or like yeah, it's called Wache and I actually painted that. It's an assortion oh. of like um, different um, ingredients together, and it's just one big dish, and it's called wache, and it's basically um, black-eyed peas cooked with rice, and with sorghum leaves, and the sorghum leaves gives it a purple color. Oh. So yeah, but then after, so you can use sorghum leaves to like dye stuff. It's not just for food, but you can use it to you know for, as a food coloring. You just need to make sure to not use a lot. Because when I tried it the first time, I used way too much, and it started like smelling like weird, and I thought I was gonna die. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, don't, don't use a lot, out. and then also make sure to take it out when you do use it to dye the food, because you do not want to ingest it. But it, yeah, it's because it's sour. Tell it me will ruin the name the, of it again. What do you call it? Sorghum leaves. No, not that. The dish. Oh, watch it. Watch it. Okay. Yeah. And which one is that over here? Let's go take a look. It's this one over here? Yeah, that one. one. Oh, this one. Yeah. Ah. So it's an assortion of um, different ingredients. There's um, there's the rice and the beans cooked together. There's um, the stew. Depending on whatever stew you want, there's going to be either beef stew, chicken stew. There's going to be that sauce I was just talking about. Mm -hmm. There's going to be like a little green salad on the side. There's going to be... There's this ingredient called um, gari, and it's basically dried cassava um, plant. Yeah. So that's, it's a whole, it's like a I burst like of different stuff. I love it. Into one dish. I yeah. Love yeah. Okay. All right, we're back. We're back. Thank you. Okay, so this looks good. It's a good browned color. You can't even tell that those were onions. That's right. So okay. now we're gonna add in the pepper mix. And our rice is ready. So when this is ready, we'll have rice for it. 
going to pour in the pepper mix. And some t when you put the tomato paste in there, it kind of like, I don't know, makes it stiff. So you kind of have to shake it out. I can smell the peppers in here. Yeah. <laughs> I, love, I love it with peppers. I'm just saying, even though I arrived late, I feel like it's the next time I'm sure you get to smell it. <laughs> <laughs> you get to experience. Oh, yeah. Again, the aromas are incredible. Yeah, I'm just trying to get as much out as possible. Okay. Now, is food cooking for people, is that a love language for you to, like, cook for your friends? Um, I wouldn't well, say... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't say it's, like, a love language for me, but, like, if I make food and I have enough and I want and I feel like I did a good job, I want people to try it. So, I yeah. Think that was always one of those main things I enjoyed living so close to you was that, like, if you had made um, a soup or a stew and you were like, oh, this is really good, you'd call me and you'd be like, it would be 9 o'clock at night, you're like, you want to try this <laughs> soup tomorrow or like today or whatever? Yeah. And then if I had made something, I would call you. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's really just the excuse to see each other and also <laughs> to try what we're making. Yeah. So for a shrimp powder, I wouldn't put a lot because when you do put a lot, it does take over. I realized that on my own. <laughs> and then a little bit of salt. And then I mean as you as I go on and add the seasonings, if I taste it along the way and I don't think it's, you know, flavorful enough, I'm just gonna add, you know, maybe like an extra like mag cube. Mm -hmm. So gotcha. then bay leaves. I got it. I just put it. I put a generous amount of bay leaves. Like I said, do what your heart wants. Nope, you already did that one. Oh, I did. Yes. Yeah, okay. Do, I think you want to do the five spice. Yeah. I mean, you can do more of that if you really want to. <laughs> you know, don't don't let me stop you. Yeah, and all my like seasonings, I took all these caps off because it's kind of a hindrance. Yeah. <laughs> when you're not really measuring. So, you will find many of the spices at my house also without those on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're very tiny. I wish the holes were like a little bigger to get the food out. I mean, the spice out, but then I'm going to put a little bit of paprika because carbonara peppers are hot generally. Some cinnamon. Then I'm gonna feel for which ones are soft <laughs> and do those first before I think about the <laughs> ones that aren't. So, okay, maybe all of them are hard. <laughs> okay, this one's soft. Yeah, it's just like a hassle because there's like no way to really make them softer. I mean, you can pop them in the microwave, but then you have to like use it immediately because mm -hmm. it like becomes hard harder so sometimes when it doesn't break I just drop it in because <laughs> it's gonna like it will eventually, yeah it would yeah. eventually you know like I mean I can't do anything about that but <laughs> <laughs> it really is what it is <laughs> yeah no she truly does <laughs> See, this one's like way softer, mm. but still like hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I usually put about four to five of these in there because I like, I really, 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 I hate when I eat food and it's just bland. <laughs> so that's why I just like don't measure. And I just pour until my heart is happy, or okay. at least my tongue. Is happy. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh yeah. Yeah, this is a struggle. <laughs> I'm just gonna. I think I'm just gonna pop these. Sometimes when I'm at home, though, I like use the back of my water bottle, and I put all of these on a like a plastic plate, and I just start like pounding them <laughs> because. <laughs> 
I should have brought a mallet. And we could have, uh, <laughs> we could have just, you know. Yeah. Okay. This, yeah, there's a hole for that one. But. <laughs> there's no hole. So, yeah, it's going to all melt in there. It looks really good. The Thank color you. is beautiful. The color is going to get even better. I've never wanted to, like, stick my face in the pot for that. So I'm going <laughs> to cover this <laughs> and let it simmer. And the way that I usually know that it's done is when all the oil comes to the top. That's how you know. Okay. Yeah, that's how you know. So usually about 15 to 20 minutes. So we can, you know, just yeah. clean up around while we clean wait. Up. Maybe you want to talk about a couple of your pieces. I think we're um, going yeah. to talk. Okay. Yeah. Um, so for this piece, I wanted to create a piece that um, reminded me of the roadside sellers. We call them roadside sellers. Um, so usually one, one of my favorite roadside snacks was um, grilled plantains. So I try to mimic that in my own way. And I also try to kind of give them a kind of disorienting feel to it because, I mean, I no longer live in the in Ghana, so everything I'm remembering is from memory, and you know, memory is gonna be fuzzy and disorienting. So that's the that's the goal for most of my art is to just make things look like disorienting. Or sometimes I think about what would it, what would it look like if it came through a time machine and it was all warped and distorted. So yeah, that's the idea for this. And usually it's eaten with roasted um, peanuts. So yeah, that's this piece. And to the next, and it's a painting, and it's sculptural. The plantains, you know, pop off the canvas. I was told that it didn't look like that in pictures, which is surprising to me. But I guess I tricked everyone. Or not everyone, some people. No, <laughs> so, yeah, it kind of, it doesn't, the 3D aspect doesn't come across in, in a two-dimensional format yeah. as well. Yeah, and I use a palette knife to, you know, make my paintings for the most part. Anything that doesn't have a figure, if it's not a figure, I'm not using a paintbrush to paint it because I want to have that disorienting feeling and the fuzzy feeling of, you know, memories. So most of my paintings are made with a palette knife. Yeah, and then to the next piece, this is a photopolymer etching on paper. And so what I did with this image is I just, I mean, I was thinking about all the snacks that I can't go into a grocery <laughs> store and just get off of like the shelves of Walmart. So I looked for an image of a random pantry. And then I added in, I like photoshopped in all these like snacks that I wish I had. And that's why the title is imaginary pantry. And that's why it's blue because <laughs> it's kind of like a blue feeling yeah so yeah that was the idea behind this one hope you like it <laughs> okay i'm gonna move on to the and next i think that comes across really well and it kind of makes it have the kind of like nostalgia or like imaginative not real feeling yeah yeah which is what i aim for from most of my work because i feel like i'm like I feel like I'm like living two lives sometimes. But this piece is called Red Red, and it's a bean stew eaten with plantains. And it's just cooked in um, palm oil. And it's really delicious. There's um, mackerel fish in there sometimes. It's just, this is another stew you can eat with rice, but this stew specifically you can eat by itself without the rice. So. Yeah, <laughs> and these are the colors that you would usually see in the actual dish because, again, with the food items, I didn't really want to distort it too much because I wanted people to be able to, you know, get a feel for the dish. So I didn't really distort the colors on, you know, these food items. So, yeah. And then this piece is fan eyes. It's, uh, it's an etching. It's a copper etching. And I went back, this is ice cream that I would usually find in Ghana. Again, same idea, I can't find this in stores here in a freezer. So I just made an etching of it. And then I kind of went back in with paint to paint in 
whatever you see in color is painted. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, and sometimes I just with my prints I go in with um, paint sometimes to kind of you know just explore because I mean I'm making additions of stuff so I get the chance to explore multiple different ways it could it could have been, which is nice. So, yeah. So for this piece, this is Wache, like we already said, it's a culmination of a bunch of different, you know, individual ingredients that makes the whole dish. And it's usually this colorful, so. Yeah, and one issue that I had with painting these is that I still wanted to paint as abstract as I usually do. So, but then the food itself is abstract in itself. Like when you look at it all together, it's an abstract dish to look at most of the dishes are so yeah it was kind of hard to capture that but I think I did it properly in a way I think so okay yeah I hope when you look at this you get hungry oh, I like how you said that they were very um, colorful dishes because that's not something we always have yeah in like the United States in the West <laughs> yeah, but yeah, most of the dishes are colorful, so yeah. yeah, most of the dishes will leave like a colorful stain on your plate, which is fun. <laughs> it's, it's fun to get out of Tupperware. It's not, but <laughs> yeah. And then this is the infamous jollof rice. Most West African countries have a version of it. Ghana and Nigeria have a friendly beef about whose is better. Obviously Ghana, I mean... I'm from Ghana, I'm not going to do Ghana like that. So <laughs> Ghana jollof is better. And this is my abstract version of Ghana jollof. So yeah. I love that texture. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then this is fan milk. Usually, so these are like the meat pies and beef patties. These are usually sitting above the fan milk um, portable freezer that the sellers have. And so the ice creams would be in this part of it and you just tell them. And usually they have like what they have on here, but I didn't put that in there because again, this is a disorienting feeling. I can't remember what is on there or what isn't on there. That's why I kind of have it in like a grass field kind of, it's like, yeah. But fan milk, <laughs> yeah. So that, there's that. And then these are drinks that I can't usually get in a store. So I try to, like again, I was saying, I try to think if I was to bring stuff through a time machine, would it be here in its original form or would it be distorted? So that's why these look the way they look. Cause these are, you, I mean, you can tell these are drink bottles and you can tell that they're representing drinks but they're not the actual drinks. So, yeah, and then I have prints of them. Again, like I said, I made um, additions of a print, and then I went back in and added stuff in. So these are the, from the same etching, but just yeah, painted Yeah, just painted differently to um, reflect what drinks I wish were in there. Yeah. It took me till now to realize that they were the same <laughs> etching. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so this is a hibiscus drink. It's called Sobolo. It's a hibiscus drink with, the base is hibiscus, and then you can add ginger, pineapple, you know, whatever flavoring you would like. Sometimes it's really spicy. I like it when it's spicy, because I just generally like spicy food, even though it gives me issues. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's that drink. And then this dish is, um, boiled yam and kuntumre and kuntumre is a spinach like leaf and it's cooked down in um, palm oils with um, you know dried fish and the dried fish is really smelly but really tasty <laughs> so so yeah and then it's cooked and then the, like onions are also cooked down in the um, oil that's why the, the onions here are um, orange because it's cooked down and it's it absorbs the color of the palm oil. And yams, these are not the same yams from here. I don't know what these would be called here, 
but these are called yams in Ghana. And we eat it with fried fish, eggs, avocados, the stew. And yeah, and people from Ghana love eggs. So you're gonna see dishes and there's gonna be eggs all over, like mostly all dishes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a snack which is literally just eggs and like a pepper paste. So yeah, we love eggs. I don't know the history behind that truly. No, I don't think anyone does. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah <laughs> yeah and so with these snacks I wanted to kind of I mean for these I wanted to make them 3d because I feel like these some of these are things that I can get like on Amazon but then the ice creams obviously you can't really I can't that would be nasty <laughs> but yeah so I just wanted to make the snacks like this but then they're still disoriented because this is all I'm trying to imagine having them here, but I don't have them here. So, yeah, well, that is it. Thank you. That is it for the description of the works. Um, yeah. Well, I have some good news about what's going on in this pot. Do you see the oil? I do. Ooh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to get a close up. And if you want to come and see the work in person, it's going to be up um, until the 9th. The 9th is, September 9th is the last day to see this show. There won't be beef stew on September 9th <laughs> or any time after today, but hopefully you can make it at home. Okay. Yeah, and the. One thing I also realized is that the peppers is what gives it that nice smell you're smelling right now. Because oh if I, gosh. if it was dominantly tomatoes, it would still smell amazing, but not as amazing as when it's dominantly peppers. So, yeah, I'm gonna taste it to make sure that it's. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. Racy, can yeah. I get a hit? Can yeah. I just get a little? Yeah. Gotta. You're correct. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're correct that that is delicious. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, the oils roast to the top. We can stop here because I can tell that all the you know all the spices have incorporated into each other. I can't like taste a specific spice by itself. If I did like taste, let's say like cumin, that means that it still needs to cook because then the cumin hasn't incorporated itself yet. Okay. So, but everything was incorporated. Do you think so? Absolutely. Okay. I think that a way you can also tell is that it lingers in the mouth a little bit, like very smoothly so. You don't have any like huge, like, oh, I just got a hit of pepper or whatever. It's a nice, smooth right. finish. Yeah. So, yeah, so this is done. Like I said, if I was cooking chicken stew, I would leave it. I would just go sit down and put it on like low heat and leave it. But... It's not chicken, so we're done. I'm gonna turn it off. I turned it to the max. We brought these containers because you mentioned that oftentimes when you get it at one of the roadside stands, this is what it's coming in. Yeah, it's right? coming in that or it's coming wrapped in a plastic little sachet. And sometimes for the wache, um, dish, it's sometimes in a plantain leaf, oh, okay. plantain tree leaf. Wow. So, okay. yeah, and for some reason, those it tastes way better when it's in the leaf. I don't know <laughs> the science behind that, but yeah, okay, I'm gonna dish out rice. Do you want to taste that? Yeah, I'm gonna, <laughs> Carol's gonna uh, be a taste taster. Oh, fluffy rice, for and did it cook properly? <laughs> yeah. Here, you want to somewhere? beautiful. Rice cooker. <laughs> shout out to the rice cooker. Go. No, truly shout out to rice cookers. Yeah. Best investment I ever made. <laughs> Was it rice cooker? Yeah. I, when I moved into my apartment, I was like, oh, I need to have um, a way to uh, feed myself. <laughs> and never have I ever felt more love than with a rice cooker sort of just doing it for me. <laughs> Did you turn it off? That's what I'm trying yes. to figure out. Why Maybe. I mean, you can put it onto the next. That's true. Yeah. So yeah. true. And then we can think it about. It might just still, yeah, take Residual. Time for it to yeah. Cool down. Perfect. Yeah. Now 
look at that color. This is incredible. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> it smells so good. I know. I'm like living, living <laughs> in the moment. It might be hot. It probably is. Oh, yeah, don't burn yourself, please. <laughs> would you like a dish, sir? I would absolutely love a dish. No, you see. can't have some. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to have a little bit because it's hot. Okay. Meryl, are you a spice fan? I mean, are you oh, yeah. normally do you like spicy food? We should have asked I do. That we do you? Food. Yeah. I can handle that as a kick. <laughs> <laughs> That's that one habanero pepper. Truly, I didn't even, I barely added any paprika in that. No, it's perfect. It's perfect. It just hits you in the back of the throat. Mm -hmm. Have water ready. Have oh, water yeah. ready. True. I'm excited. I it love like, it. Yeah. Thank you so much, Tracy. May I have a piece of a fork? Can we see? Can I'm still very much I will with think you about it. The, Thank you. <laughs> I'm not a huge tomato person, but I love bell peppers. Yeah. So. Yeah, the bell pepper, when I figured it out that, like, bell peppers is what I needed to switch out, I was like, uh, <laughs> because I was, because I just mm. didn't, it didn't taste like it did at home, so maybe people do, like, maybe people do use predominantly peppers, but then, I don't know, it was just, it wasn't hitting when it was just, like, mostly tomatoes. Yeah. I was also going to say, going into fall, this is a fantastic, like, yeah. if you're used to more, um, I don't know, like um, American fall stews and stuff like that. This is a great new thing to try because. Yeah. And this is the base. Mm. Like if I wanted to make jollof rice, all I would do is put rice in there and cook it. And then we have jollof rice, beef jollof rice. Yeah. And then this is also the base for like, um, this is how I do my base for peanut soup, oh, okay. which is a, a soup in Ghana also. So yeah, this is truly just like the base for most dishes mm -hmm. or not most, some dishes. Yeah. And peanut soup is so good. I'd say that's probably one of my favorites yeah. as far as peanut like, soup. If you like um, Indian cuisine, peanut soup is kind of has kind of that flavor palette. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. What kind of flavors are you getting at? What do you like about this dish? Oh yeah. Well, I have to say, as far as like peppers go, and a lot of other dishes, you sort of sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of other dishes, you know that there's a pepper in there, but you sort of only. Um, notice the pepper in that there's spice. Um, in this dish, you really notice the flavor of the pepper mostly. Yeah. Like the, the, and especially like the scotch bonnet, like there is actual flavor there beyond just like capsaicin, you know, just, it's yeah. not just spicy. And um, the beef itself is just like, it reminds me of like, um, like a slow cooker beef. Like it's really, very like mm -hmm. soft. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't really need teeth, honestly. If I could. <laughs> but, <laughs> I don't know if I go that far because I do love my teeth, but <laughs> <laughs> no, it is so teeth. yummy. And all that, like the beef fat and everything has all like sort of yeah. rendered in. And it's yeah, that's what that's another thing. I don't like cut off the fat of the beef. I just cook it all in there because I mean, that's where that good stuff is. Yeah, 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 that's the flavor. Tastiness. Yeah. Now, when I do make chicken stew, chicken, I realize that chicken pulls out way more flavor than beef. And it like it still tastes the same, but like on a different level. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so. Racy, yeah. do you want some of this? You haven't given yourself any. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was gonna say. And I'll give the, you some of mine. Okay. So what's the score? Is it ten out of ten? Ten out of ten. Be honest. I'm gonna give you a nine because there's always room for improvement. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's that is true. So. I was gonna say you have given me food, so I I have to give you a ten just so on like a personal ethical scale. <laughs> But it also is just delicious. So. Okay. Thank you. Mm. Well, we're going to let you all eat your food. We're so excited and happy that you were willing to share this with our fans, the African Train <laughs> fans, yes. people who are hanging on. I hope you all are cooking. Send us a note or pictures of your stew if you made some at home. Yeah. We would love to see it. And thank you all for joining me in cooking. I hope you followed along and made beef stew, and if not, um, I hope. You learned something. Today. Yeah, I hope you learned something. And try today. it. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah. Yeah. Thank you Thank all. you. Thank you all. We will uh, see you soon, hopefully at the gallery, booth four.
September 9th so that you can see this awesome show. We also have Kristen Klippel and Althea Jones. Those will be coming down. And our next opening will be um, September, well, we'll have an opening reception September 22nd. So check that out as well. Thank you all. Have a great night.